Hello YouTube, in this video I will share my thoughts regarding FormBot Warren Trident Kit that you could see earlier on my channel. You might ask, is it really worth to build Warren Trident? Or maybe you have concerns regarding complexity of the build. So as I have finished building one two weeks ago, I will share my experience. I started with printing tools and essential parts. It was very handy to use the list of the required parts that user 120 decibel have put together. You can find the link in Trident channel pinned messages of Warren Design Discord group. People in this community are, are super helpful, especially if you have any difficulties during the build. For ABS parts, I have picked three colors that I already had on hands: Spark ABS Plus, Sparkle Green and Sparkle Black, which are super easy to work with and I didn't have any warping or adhesion issues. On the other side, KVP Purple, which I picked as main color, was very troubling during the build. It had very inconsistent extrusion and very frustrating warping issues, even with 50 degrees Celsius in enclosure of my Warren Zero, so I had to reprint few parts multiple times. It was very interesting to try new for me transparent PETG printing that Stefan from CNC Kitchen showed in one of his latest videos. With very little tweaks I got very interesting result. Initially I didn't have any plans to uh, make a video regarding this build and here you can see I'm already putting the motors together under the frame and then I realized okay probably it's a perfect opportunity to make a video during the build process. My kit contained quality components, very straight lead screws, good quality rails, I just degreased them with a brake cleaner and used super simple oil to loop them. There are a few techniques how you can set up a belt tension, but in my case I just uh, set whatever I was feeling based on my previous printers or my previous builds and I set up a stealth burner carriage here. I have to say that Warren team have done an amazing job putting together Trident documentation. My build process went very smooth with almost no issues and after putting together bed assembly and installing electric components on DIN rails, I was ready to get tool head wiring done and maybe even print something on this printer. Sometimes you're very excited about finishing the job, putting your wires and everything super clean together spending a lot of time figuring out how to put stuff in zip tying everything and being ready for wiring and then you realized you forgot about extruder motor cable that's what i have to put in right now wiring the only thing that was a bit confusing as original build documentation used spider motherboard and in formbot kit we have big 3 octopus version 1.1 so it required some research and after a while i was able to find an article by warren design team the only thing is that article mostly describes warren 2.4 setup but it was a very good starting point for people who might be interested this is how I have done the wiring, I will replace this board later, but for the kit you can use that as a reference. Obviously I can a little bit explain it, so we have heater extruder, the bed, uh, the Amron switch, then XY, 3Z, this is a dual port, one driver, so the same thing. I had to cut the wire for the probe and put diode here. Here they goes. Then end stops are going over here and those are the sensors for heated bed and hot end. You also have to put motors power the same as incoming power. The only one thing missing at this point is grounding of the frame. I don't have enough space here so I probably will connect here. I will post my big 3 configuration file in my github repository. And after finishing it, it was the first time when we turned on the printer. No magic smoke. So here's the first print out of this 3D printer. Looks not bad. 
I had to just do basic calibration for the Z and stop and uh, PID tuning for the bed and the hot end and that's pretty much it. I'm using PIF profile with um, super slicer. If I have any crazy modifications, just change the size of the bed and that's pretty much it. To be honest, this is the most quality first print I ever had without any kind of tuning to the printer. Um, I'm talking about resonance, frequency calibration and uh, pressure advance. This looks really clean. After verifying a printer working, I have to do only one thing. Put together panels and finish the build with printing skirts and exhaust stuff. So I've been putting together all the pieces I had printed already on the printer. I just want to show the quality of the parts. I did resonance frequency, resonance frequency and just copy pasted the pressure advance from my other printer. It's really nice quality. And at this point, it probably very clear that I would spend those $800 on this printer again. I really like that build. I very enjoyed building this printer and I really like the quality that came out out of this printer without any tuning and actually in quite impressive speeds. During the build, I only had few issues. One of them with cheap cable chains. They were breaking, but you have plenty spares. Cheap M3 spring nuts were very hard to put into the extrusions, but when you get used to it, it's possible. Misleading information was about X, Y, N stops. Uh, specification says it has Hall effect sensors, but in reality, those are regular switches. In some cases, length of the wires that was provided are little short, in another too long, but it also kind of doesn't affect anything and you just have to rearrange electronics differently and also wires were crimped very well in my kid lead screw nuts uh, mounting bolts were stripped and there is no extra provided and exactly the same problem with heat inserts and no extra provided too thank you very much for watching this video consider subscribing leave a like if you like it dislike if you don't like it see you in the next one bye bye